I'm here today with John Riley from MIT. Um, John, welcome. You know, you've been quoted in recent weeks as the source of data of the view that cap and trade in the US will be very expensive. And I think in particular that some of your data has been used to undermine cap and trade to some extent. But perhaps I'd like to hear from you as to the source of the data and what your findings really are. Yeah. Now the uh, numbers have been misquoted. Uh, the uh, uh, congressional Republicans have really taken the numbers uh, that we calculated for the tax revenue if all the allowances were auctioned and estimated that as the cost and then turned that into a cost per household of some $3,100. If we calculate the real cost per household, we come up more uh, you know, discounted over the horizon, more like $800 per household. Uh, the error is that uh, that auction revenue gets recycled into the economy. And in fact, the uh, current uh, Marky Waxman bill uh, goes to great lengths to get a lot of that money back to uh, middle income people, middle income or lower income people. So they may actually come out even better than that. But John, I've looked at the MIT studies and a number show a continuing rise of CO2 right through to 2050. Wouldn't incoming technologies defray that cost to some, to some uh, extent, particularly as those technologies mature and their prices fall, and then they affect the overall uh, deployment of, of low technologies into the market? Well, the, way the, the reason the price rises like that is it's really set based on the fact that the, the, uh, the uh, uh, policy allows banking behavior. So the kind of the economic equilibrium of banking is that uh, buyers and sellers in the market will bank forward and they'll look at the rate of return of money in the economy and, and bank at that rate. So we represent that as a 4% increase. So really the real effect will be is what the market expects uh, future technology to be. And if the market expected future technology to be much cheaper, how that would be reflected in our model is a lower initial price but the, then still the price rising at 4%. So with the banking sort of story, you tend to get that. Of course, in reality, if there's surprises that no one anticipates and the market doesn't expect, then you can get you know, drop in prices later on. First, people expect it's going to be costly. And then if something is discovered unexpectedly that really no one anticipates, then you could get a drop in the price. That's a, that's a good segue into my next question, actually, because I think one of the views we heard expressed in the meeting was that we've really underestimated the ability of the of the, the economy to find emission reductions at, at low cost. And then in fact this might offer one of the explanations as to why the EU ETS really has run at a relatively low level in, in the second phase. Well I know uh, we talked about sulfur emissions a bit and how there is a story about how the sulfur trading program greatly reduced the, redu the cost. Uh, there's different stories about that. Some of the estimates that people talk about were really on the ridiculously high end initially anyway. So if you take the practical estimates, the reduction wasn't that great. On the other hand, um, people who look at just these big technologies, like what's it cost to switch from coal to gas or from coal to nuclear, often miss out on a lot of smaller things that people can do. Efficiency or re, uh, uh, you know, deploying different technologies. So that can be a, a, a so, so you have to be careful about doing these very specific you know, this technology versus that, as if that's the only option. On the other hand, I mean, I think our, I'm not sure we're overestimating the cost with our modeling exercise anymore. In the first phase of the ETS, we really estimated that the likely price would be near zero. And for a while it shot up to, as you know, something like 30 euros a yep. ton, but in the end it dropped to zero. So we found that, we thought that our model was actually fairly well calibrated to reality uh, and that, uh, and that, um, and so we'll see. I think the market is still learning how to, what to make of the long-term price movements and where they'll go. Well, thanks very much, John. I think uh, that, that's a good insight into some of the issues around the cost of cap and trade. And uh, thank you very much for the discussion. You're welcome.